Welcome to today's webinar. I'll be your host. My name is Dean Jacks and I'm with iDesign Solutions. 2021 continues to be a challenging year for teachers and students. Some schools are back in class, some are working remotely, while some have a hybrid system in place. This presents a particular challenge when it comes to teaching robotics in the classroom. Fortunately, we have VexCode VR. The VR stands for Virtual Robot. The software is browser-based, meaning that there's no installation, no licensing, and it works on all major desktops and tablets. Let's take a look and see what all the excitement is about. So we're going to go to our browser and we're going to navigate to vr.vex.com. And that's going to take us to this web page where we can actually code a virtual robot. So the first thing you'll notice is that a tutorial opens. So let's take a look at what these tutorials entail. I'm going to open this up full screen and let's take a listen. With VexCode VR, you can program a VR robot to do many things. Every project begins with a when started block. There are many different blocks that you can use to program your robot. Let's add a few blocks to our project. Blocks can easily be stacked together, rearranged, and deleted. Need help with a block? Getting help is easy. Select a block to learn how it works. Another great place to learn different blocks and behaviors is from example projects. Once you are ready to try your project with the VR robot, you can select Playground. Then, select Start to run your project. When done coding, you can download a copy of your project by selecting Save to your device. To learn more about VexCode VR, take a look at the other tutorial videos. Have fun! As you can see, VexVR makes it really easy for students to get started. They have lots of different tutorials that cover everything from getting started all the way up to storing data, using loops, so that the students can progress at their own pace. Let's take a look at how easy it is to get started. So if we pull out some blocks here, we're going to drive forward, we're going to turn right, we're going to open our playground, and if we press the run button, there goes our robot. So some great information here. VEX gives you all of the sensor data right here on the playground. That can be toggled on and off. They also give you three different camera displays. So right now we've got the top down. We can do a third person view and we also have the front bumper cam. Now you may be thinking this looks a lot like Scratch. And that's because VexCode is built off of the same Scratch platform. So whether you're using VexCode Go for grades 3 to 5, or VexIQ for grades 6 to 8, or VexV5 for grades 9 to 12, your students will never need to learn a new interface. They can get straight into the coding. Let's take a look how easy it is to get started. We know if we bring these commands out, we can have our robot driving forward and turning. But we can also change units, so we can change this to inches. And we can give our students a simple assignment. So let's say we teach them how to make the robot drive forward and turn, and now we ask them for a challenge to make the robot drive in a square. Now with coding, there are many ways to do things. The easiest way is to duplicate. So rather than dragging and dropping, I can simply grab the top block, right click, duplicate, and snap that on. So now what we've got is we've got a robot that will drive in a 10 inch square. Now what happens if we decide we want a larger square that we want the robot now to drive in a 20 inch square? Well, we can simply go up here and change all these numbers, but this is where we learn different ways of coding. So if we go down to control, we've got some different loops here, and I'm going to show you how to use the repeat loop. And again, you can add blocks in. You don't have to break everything apart to do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to repeat four times. So what that means is this little arrow says that this is a loop, and it's going to repeat, and we've told it to repeat four times. 
So in two easy lessons, we've taught sequential coding, drive forward, turn right, and we've also taught them how to use loops. That's how easy it is to get started with VexCode VR. VexCode VR also gives us a number of different playgrounds. If we go to Grid Map, which is the one we're on now, and we click the button, you'll notice that there's a list of many, many different playgrounds. I'll let you explore most of these yourself, but I just want to highlight a couple of them, which make it even easier to get students excited and coding. So we're going to click on Wall Maze. And what this is going to give us, exactly like it sounds, is a maze where the students have to code the robot to move through the maze and get to the finish line. Another favorite is the Castle Crasher, where the students can actually, just like the name says, can actually crash into things. And the robot can be used to either avoid obstacles or to knock things down. Vexcode VR also is available in a large number of different languages. So if you've got exchange students or students where English isn't their first language, there are some options here that may be able to help you out. Another great feature of the Vexcode VR is the ability to uh, watch the code in Python or to actually code in Python. So you'll notice here, as we build code, on the right side, you can see that the Python code that corresponds with the blocks is automatically being updated. So just by having this window open, it's giving students an opportunity to take a look at the Python programming language and how it looks. For those students and teachers looking for a more advanced experience, there is also the option to convert to a full text Python project. By clicking this button in the bottom right corner, it will convert your existing project into a Python project. I will warn you, there is no convert back to blocks, so this is a one-way street. The text version of VexVR does still allow for drag and drop. Students can take commands and simply move them into place as they did with the blocks, or it also does allow for intuitive coding. If you start typing, it will give you your different options, as you can see here. Just like the blocks, there is the help button located next to each command where we can click on those and it will open up a help that explains what the command does, how to use it, and it will give you examples of how that code will work. As I mentioned before, the VexCode VR robot does have some special features such as the pen which allows students to create artwork on the art canvas. The VexVR robot also has a magnetic attachment that allows it to pick up and drop metal discs. These features, plus all of the built-in sensors, create a powerful coding experience. Now that you've seen how easy it is to get started with VexVR, I want to show you how easy it is to bring this into your classroom. So you have two different options. If we go to the top, there's a button here that says Learn, and if we open that up, that will bring us to the Vex Code VR Computer Science course, which is nine units, including the full lessons, quizzes, and coding examples. If we click on one of these units, what you'll see is that it has different lessons. So these are lessons about the different parts of code, and it does end with a unit exam. The second option, if you're looking for something a little less structured, is next to the Learn button and next to the Tutorials is Activities. And what these are is these are fun little activities that you can do with your students, all developed by VEX. So let's take a look at, for instance, Draw a House. What's great about these is they all open as a Google Doc. So right away, you can make a copy of it, you can modify it, you can change it around, or you can use it just as is. It shows us which art playground we're using. In this case, it's the art canvas. And what's great about all these challenges is they have different levels. So in this case, there's level one, program the VR robot to draw a house. Level two is add a garage to the side of the house. And level three is adding windows, a door, a chimney, or other decorations, etc. Because this is web-based, New activities will appear all the time, so you want to check back and see what's new. You may have noticed when I first clicked on this tab that there is a teacher's portal, and this is fantastic. So if we open this up, what this gives us is this gives us 
the all the teacher resources for the computer science fundamentals resources that's the nine unit course and it also gives us all the activity resources for the activities if we open up the pacing guide we'll choose United States and what it does is it gives us an overview of the nine-week program it shows you the different units talks about what behavior they're learning gives you a description and makes it really easy to custom tailor it to make sure that you're uh, applying it to the standards that you want to teach. We also have an email home if you want to send that out to the parents so that they know what you're teaching. We have the quiz and exam answer keys. Again, this opens up in Google Docs, so you can download any of these units, modify them, add notes, etc. And we also have the challenge solutions, which downloads as a zip file and gives you the actual code you can load into VexCode VR as part of your lesson plan or just to learn on your own. We have the same for the activities. We can look at the pacing guide and you'll notice it shows us the CSTA standards as well as giving us an idea of the key programming concepts that each lesson focuses on. You can also download the zip folder just the same as for the computer science fundamentals resources and what it will give you is it will give you all of the answers for all three levels for all of the activities that VEX provides. So now that we've got the assignments, how do we give them to the class, whether we're working in class or remotely? So I'm going to use Google Classroom as an example. So I've created my VEX Code VR class. I can open that up and we can see that I've posted a new assignment, week one, draw a house. So what I've done is I've simply copy and pasted the most important details. So the playground is Art Canvas and this is what the challenge is. I've also made a copy of the Google Doc and attached it so the students can open it up and take a look. Once the students have completed the assignment, they can go to File, Save to Device, and save their code which they can submit to the Google Classroom or whichever uh, classroom software that you're using. The challenge is that when you go into your Google Classroom or whichever software you're using, there will be no preview available because this is the actual code. So you can download this and then load it into your VexCode VR. That's a lot of work, especially if you've got larger classes. So what I ask of my students is submit a screenshot of their assignment and this shows me that they've completed the code at a level three. The second thing I ask for is that by using the share button in the top right corner, they can download a PDF of their code, which I can scroll through and take a look of all within Google Classroom or whichever software you're using. Of course, you still have the option if you want, once you've downloaded the student's project, you can do a load from your device and open the student's code and click run and you can sit back and watch what the student has coded. Another great feature of the VEX Code VR is the step button. So by using this button, we are able to go through the code one command at a time. So it makes it an easy way for the students to step through their code and find out what's working, what's not working, and where changes need to be made. All right, you've hung in with me this long, so it's time for me to teach you some tips and tricks. So say we are working on the wall maze here and I needed to move the robot. It's very tedious if I've got to pull this out, then I've got to change it to inches, and then we figured out that 10 inches is going to bring me right to the spot where I want to be. To do that over and over, you can actually modify your code bits for yourself and customize it. So in the window here, over on the left pane, I can modify this right here. And now every time I need to use that block, it's ready to go. So we're gonna get through the first part of this maze. And there we go. Another tip if you're using a magnet is to energize the magnet ahead of time. And that way, as your robot's driving along, 
it'll pick up your object and you don't have to worry about energizing it at the exact right time. If you're looking for a really good challenge from your student, in the drop down menu on the playground you will see some of these that say dynamic. And what dynamic means is the opposite of static, is that every time you reset the playground after you've run your code, it'll actually give you a new challenge. So this is something where the students need to learn to work through these problems using sensors rather than just drive forward, turn left, turn right. Another great activity from VEX is the Hour of Code, and this includes VEX Code VR Coral Reef Cleanup. So it includes a video with a mission briefing, and the students are going to code the robot to drive around the coral reef and pick up disposed plastic. As with all the VEX challenges, it has level 1, level 2, and level 3, and each level has its own tutorial built in where the students can learn more about it. The Coral Reef Cleanup is another great way to get students excited and involved because it brings out a real world example. So if we press play on this one of the run, you'll notice the robot starts driving, the battery meter starts moving, so rather than a timer, it's how much battery does the robot have left, and it tells you how much trash you've collected. Once the student is done, if they hit the stop button, it says way to go, tells me how much I've collected, and I can also get a certificate. So if I click here, it asks me for my name, I can generate the certificate, The certificates are downloaded as a PDF so students can keep them electronically, submit them to a Google Classroom, or print them out. If students scroll down once they've completed their mission, it also gives them real-world indication of what 4 kilograms of plastic waste represents. What's great about VEX Code VR is all of the skills and all of the coding that they're learning using this online platform can be used directly with the VEX robots as well. A lot of the teachers that I'm working with that are back in class are still using the VEX Code VR as an introduction to coding because each student can learn and work independently and it really builds their confidence as well as their skills with coding so that when they are working with the physical robots, they're already thinking about how am I going to code this and what kind of a robot can I build that's going to work the best with what I've already learned in regards to coding. So why use VEX Code VR? It's free of charge, it's browser-based, so there's no downloads or login required, and it can be used on its own or as a tool to enhance your VEX Robotics program. If you love the idea of VEX Code VR, but don't have the coding experience to take this into the classroom, iDesign also offers teacher and teacher-student training courses where we'll have you coding like a pro in no time. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch this presentation. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please reach out to your local rep, Scott Reed. Have a great day.